Hello, welcome to Faith Challenge for Facebook. I am Pastor Lee Reed of Grace Family Bible Church, 2056 Tennessee Street in the beautiful city of Buffalo, New York. I want to just thank you for um, coming and checking out this channel, and we just wanted to have a little quick Bible study. This will be a little abbreviated rather than a longer version of Faith Challenge that we have on in the city of Buffalo, because we primarily are just going to deal with one question at a time. And today's question or topic, rather, I'd like to discuss is what gospel do you believe? And we find that to be so important today because individuals are believing a lot of different things in this world. Um, different religions believe different things, but primarily what I want to focus on is those of us that prescribe the Bible, especially the King James, but primarily the Bible as our means for being in a right relationship with God. So I'm going to primarily look at this one verse out of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15th chapter. And I, I pretty much try to like to turn at real time because it gives us an opportunity to study the Bible together. It's going to be a very brief study today, but we want to look at this one verse in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 4. Actually, it's a one little passage, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. It goes on to say, By which also you are re have received. You are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now this particular verse here is a very unique verse. It's authentic, it's genuine, and it is, in fact, the one singular area of Scripture that an individual must place his or her trust in in order to be saved in this world today. And I don't care if you belong to a Baptist church or Methodist church. I don't care if you claim to be a Muslim or a Jehovah Witness. If you're trusting the fact that Christ died for your sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose on the third day, you are saved. And religion has nothing to do with who you are. Are as it pertains to God. See, religion is man's attempt to try to appease God or try to make himself righteous before God. But what the gospel has done and provided for us is 100% foolproof uh, uh, finished work on our behalf that Jesus Christ has done for us. The Bible in this passage declares that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And I'm going to visit a passage over here in Romans, the third chapter as well. Because Romans 3 is not the gospel as it pertains to what one must believe to be saved, but it gives you the details of the gospel. And I thought I might bring that forth because I know a lot of individuals, not a lot, but a few individuals have actually began to believe that this is the gospel that you would present to somebody. But Romans, I mean, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the presentation of the gospel, which the Apostle Paul makes it very clear. But it gives you some very clear details over here in Romans, the third chapter. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. Uh, Ephesians, the third chapter, lets us know that the Apostle Paul is the, what he refers to himself as the Apostle of the Gentiles. You and I in this age, you know, we are Gentiles and his message is directed toward us. Look what it says in Romans 3, 21 to 22. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. It goes on and says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ, who God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Now, this is the this is the nail in the coffin right here. Verse 26, it says, To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. See, it's no longer about you trying to be, uh, to establish righteousness on your own before God. God allowed his son to establish his righteousness, and then he gave it to you as a free gift. Oh, praise God. This is good news today. He gave it to you as a free gift. And 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, also declares this to be a truth as well. 2 Corinthians 5. Now, I'm going kind of fast because I know the time wears out, but you can just make these notes. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19 to 21. We're still talking about that gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The fact that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures that he 
was buried that he rose on the third day. That is what I beg, I implore individuals to believe. You'll see it on this Facebook page. You'll see it on my YouTube page. You'll see it. If you hear, if you talk to me, that's what I, that's my conversation because that's the one significant thing that you must do in this age in order to be made right with God. Look what happens here. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Oh, praise. Isn't that glorious? Do you realize that God is not imputing your lost brother, your lost sister, your lost husband, your lost wife sins unto He's not charging their sins unto them. God is not charging their sins unto them because he's placed all the sins on Jesus Christ. And he charged his son, Jesus Christ, with their sin. No, this is good news. Well, they're not saved yet. See, they still have to believe. This is It's a time frame. Before they die, they must believe in order to be beneficiaries of this truth. Look what it goes on to say. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. And I have to stop there. The term ambassadors for Christ is very unique. We're not witnesses like, you know, in, in, in early Acts, they, they, they were witnesses. In the late Gospels, they were witnesses. Um, that's where the term Jehovah Witness get their idea of being witnesses from because we're not witnesses, we are ambassadors. We're not disciples, we are ambassadors. We're not a priesthood, we are ambassadors. Ambassadors are like a, a foreign a representative for, for, from a foreign country that comes to represent a country that is a, a, a abroad. And we're like, we're like foreigners here, and we're representing our King, Jesus Christ, and we represent him with the message that he gave to give to us, to the world. And that world, and that message is that they need to be reconciled because of what he did on the cross. And this is that acceptable time. Look what it goes on to say. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you. Here goes that word, beseech. That means I'm begging. I mean, I, and you know, a lot of times people look at me and they seem like I'm kind of passionate about it because the expression... That should be on an individual's face or it, you should at least feel coming from me. It's like, I'm kind of pressing you with this. You know, I'm like, come on, believe and, you know, trust this. This is it right here because if you miss this, there's nothing else left. You know, I should love you enough to want to beg you. are not too proud to beg if, in fact, that is the case. And this is God's extension to us. He loves us so much that he's beseeching us. He's, he's reaching out to us. He's begging us. People say, God ain't got to beg. He doesn't have to beg, but he loves you enough to beg. And his extension to you and I is that God did beseech you. That means to beg. You buy us, and he's doing it through us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. That means God has done something on your behalf through his son Jesus Christ to bring you back to himself. To bring you back. Not just bring you back to himself because whether you realize it or not, both the righteous and the unrighteous have been reconciled to God. Reconciliation doesn't mean salvation. Reconciliation means that Jesus Christ paid the Christ that he's going to pay the price so that he'll be judge of both the living and the dead. He's going to have the right to judge those that believe and those that don't believe. So you've been brought back to God. God allowed his son to pay the penalty, pay the price for you. The price has been paid. And if you accept and trust the gospel, you'll be in him, with him eternity and blissed in, in paradise. But if you don't accept the gospel, you won't be in paradise with him. And, and we don't want to go into the depths of what, what, what stands for you other than, you know, the fiery pits of the um, lake of fire. But it goes on in verse 21 of 2 Corinthians 5. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now I say this over and over again. If you've ever heard me speak, you often probably have taught, heard me make a reference to how God the Father made his son, Jesus Christ, a sinner. He placed sin on him. Jesus Christ didn't perform sin. He didn't practice sin. He didn't do sin. But God saw fit to make his son a sinner without him doing sin. He, he made him pay the penalty for the sin and pay the price for the sin, and he didn't actually do any sin. But he had to take the punishment for someone else's sin that he did not commit. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment because on the same uh, uh, basis, God gives you the righteousness of someone who, and you didn't commit the righteousness. Jesus Christ committed the righteousness and he gives it to you as a free gift and you're going to have to and you will have the ability, thank God, to receive the reward, not because you've done anything, but because Jesus Christ has done it 
on your behalf. Look what it says. He who knew no sin was made sin that you might be made the righteousness of God in him. God makes you righteous because he gives you the righteousness of his son. Like he put the sin on Jesus Christ and made him a sinner. He makes you righteous. Don't think you're righteous because you're doing good. You're righteous because you've trust in the righteousness of Jesus Christ on your behalf. And I want to read these last two verses because I want to just make these little segments here so we can get an opportunity to post them on Facebook quite readily. We're going to do this through YouTube Capture. I'm going to put them on Facebook page as well. But I want you to correspond with me any any way that you would like to. And we're going to have this Bible study going maybe two or three times a week. Um, we hope to have some guests on eventually just to try to spice things up a little bit, keep it interesting. Because I find that people, you know, you can post some foolishness on Facebook and, you know, you get 1,000 hits. But you post anything positive, if I get more five to ten hits, I know that that's a glorious day or a glorious, glorious uh, uh, event. So I, I thank God for that. But it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 6, look what it says. We're going to talk about the same gospel. We then as workers together with him, it says, it says with, with him, beseech, there it goes again. You also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. This is extension. We live in this age. It's called the grace of God. God is extending his grace towards you. You're not under a program called the law. In time past, Israel was under a program called the law. If they did good, God would reward them. If they didn't do good, God would curse them or punish them. You're not under a program like that today. God has, Today, the Bible says he causes it to rain on the just as well as the unjust. Today, even sinners have an opportunity to live in a, in, a, in, in a position before God that God still blesses them in spite of themselves. The sad thing is what's what we're going to say here. It says, you hope you don't receive the grace of God in vain. In verse 2, it says, for he have said, I have heard thee in the time accepted and in the day of salvation, I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold. Now is the day of salvation. I don't know who you are out there, but this is the day. This is the day of salvation. It's an opportunity for you to simply place your faith, your trust, your belief in what God provided for us through the finished work of Jesus Christ. The fact that he died for our sins, that he was buried, that he rose on the third day. You don't have to text me, email me, respond to this. All you need to do is trust it in your heart. You don't have to tell anybody. You can do it in the privacy of your heart, and God will get the glory. Because on that last day, on that day when Jesus Christ comes back for us, all of us will be caught up together because you've trusted something that absolutely changed your life the moment you trusted this glorious gospel. We didn't want to keep you long, but we just wanted to share that glorious gospel with you, and we pray that somebody today hears that gospel. Remember, we're going to try to do this at least two or three times a week. So just keep your, um, keep posted on the page. Check my uh, Facebook page at Leroy Reed. Friend me at Facebook. Or you can also uh, check out the YouTube page, Pastor Leroy Reed. And um, you'll see the posts. They'll come, be coming up quite readily now. Because we can't waste this time. We have to really get be about our Father's business. And we just want to try to get out this glorious message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a good day.